Hey everybody, welcome back to Leo the Lefty. How are you guys? Um, hope everybody's doing well. If you're returning to my channel, thank you. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. I'm Leo and I'm left-handed, so I make art while I tell you a story. Um, today I'm going to be doing uh, winter folklore. I meant to do this earlier, but I've been very busy, and um, this is going to be part one. I probably won't even do part two until like next year or something, but uh, I wanted to get this done because I live in the south, and I don't have much winter left, and I wanted to do it while it's still relatively cold. <clears throat> so I just uh, kind of delved into some lore from all around the world and I'm going to tell you just a little smidge about a few different um, fairy tales and folklores and legends and all that from around the world based around winter time so um, yeah I drew this oh months ago um, and I just felt like it was sort of appropriate for the um, story and so I'm gonna color this weird little snow dude, snowman guy, while I tell you guys about some winter folklore. So let's dive in. Alright, so, oh, you know what? I want to do markers first. Markers first. We're going to give him some uh, blood red teeth to make him a little bit scarier. I just thought that that would be more interesting. I don't know what we're going to color the inside of the mouth yet. Probably dark gray or something like that. There we go. I have to really focus on these little parts because my eyes are so terrible. So here in just a second I will start telling you some winter lore. Okay, we got that done. Let me start on here. So the first thing we've got is the Yukiona and that's a Japanese snow spirit and what that's about is if a woman dies due to exposure and being cold she can potentially become a Yukiona. So um, she kind of has magical powers over the cold and she can be um, like a very beautiful woman or, um, you know, it's usually a very beautiful woman or sometimes an old woman. But most of the time, from what I can tell from the research I did, it seems like it's usually a, a younger, beautiful woman who seems to be stuck in the snow. And when you go to offer her help, that's when she gets you. Like, her price for her powers is to steal souls. And so she has to... Claim some souls, folks. And, I don't know. Seems like a more interesting way to go than most others. Um, so, she has a... She always appears on nights with snow. And she has, like, cold blue lips. And she has long, black, shiny hair. Like, it's very, very long. And... You know, if you see her, she's got very, like, pale, sometimes almost translucent skin. And she's got, her kimono is closed um, right over left, which is how it's done for burial when a person dies. So that's kind of a giveaway there, that she's not a living being. And um, so she'll pretend to be stuck in the snow, and whoever goes over to help her um she kind of sends her icy breath to freeze them and kill them and that's whenever she takes your soul sometimes she appears to be holding a child or a baby and if somebody tries to hold the baby for her and touches it um they like freeze to death it sounds like they freeze solid so that's another aspect of the legend which is pretty cool pretty cool very interesting um i really had a 
pretty good time looking into these. Some of them I've heard of, some of them I've never heard of. So the next one, oh, we're going to do Winter Witches, which are mostly like Scandinavian, Germanic type uh, fairy tales. And, and, um, so these are just kind of seem to be like a mix of some of those. Just, this is just an umbrella. This isn't a specific winter witch because there are definitely specific ones. But this is just sort of saying that a lot of cultures have like a, uh, winter witch, which I guess you could kind of consider the Yukiona a, a, a type of winter witch because these in these Germanic Scandinavian, uh, you know, Western European cultures seem to be very, very similar anyway, which is very cool. Let's see here. Okay. Um, they're usually, uh, so, they're usually associated, obviously, with winter because they're winter witches. So, um, depending on the culture, they might have different sort of entities for different seasons. Um, but I know in, like, Norse and Germanic culture, because they have, like, so much winter up there, they have a lot of their, uh, lore and legends, um, based in winter. Which, winter is my favorite season, and probably because I live in the south, and I don't normally have to deal with, uh, feet of snow and things like that. So, to you guys that get buried quite often, I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, back to the tale. So sometimes the witches are um, benevolent, kind, and helpful, and sometimes they're extremely violent and scary and terrifying. So that's cool. I, I enjoy the thought of both of those things, you know. Keeps things spicy. finish coloring this in. Sorry, I need to turn the page on my notes, but I want to finish this first. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> this next one. Please forgive me on my pronunciation. Uh, Jotunheim. J-O-T-U-N-H-E-I-M. Um, so, this is a Norse belief and well we're going to get into some Norse beliefs later um, I will do another episode on um, like the tree of life and um, their actual like religious beliefs and everything but all you need to know right now is in their beliefs there are nine worlds okay and um One of them is the home of the forest giants. Um, I'm sorry. I'm trying to read through this and color at the same time, and I'm losing my track. Uh, so these forest giants, they are a, you know, like, constant threat to the gods of Asgard, um, and humans, and basically everybody. And so they are under watch and supervision um, by the god known as Aesir. And again, I apologize for my pronunciation. I am not probably getting most of these right. And Aesir some, has the power to keep the giants from crossing out of their world. And so that's his job, is to keep them kind of held down and in their world and but their world is like a winter I'm not gonna say wonderland but it's it's a wintry world very cold icy lots of snow and all of that sort of thing and they're the frost giants and so um, Asir keeps them contained in, in their world but again I don't I'm trying to hold back because I don't want to spoil a bunch when I actually dive into this. Um, so.
so I, I'm not being very cohesive on this one. But anyway, later on we'll learn about the Giants a little more. Uh, next we've got Frau Percha, or Bircha, depending on who's talking about it. Okay, I'm going to flip this one upside down so I can get these up here. Um, so, Frau Percha is like a terrifying Santa Claus in that she checks to see who's been doing well and who hasn't. Um, but her punishments can be a bit extreme. And, and they can also be kind of like mundane as well. Like one of her punishments can be like tangling your spindling thread. Which is probably a pain in the butt, but not harmful in, in essence. Or one of her punishments can be cutting you open, taking all your organs out, stuffing your uh, stomach cavity full of rocks, and then sewing you back up. So, I mean, I hope that's like a sliding scale of like, you know, the punishment fits the crime. And it's not just arbitrary for whatever she's in the mood for. Um, but, you know, different legends vary. And she's also said to be very protective of those that are doing well. And she kind of judges people based on their work ethic and their cleanliness and, um, you know, their politeness in society and, you know, how well they uh, keep their hygiene and things like that. So she's kind of judgy and everything, but she sounds terrifying and magnificent. I'm already in love with her. Okay, one more little one here and we'll get to the, the body of the snowman. And so, Frau Percha, she can also appear in the form of an old woman, a, a grown, younger grown woman, or a swan. So, that's pretty cool. I don't know if I'd want to appear to somebody as a swan. Um, I feel like somebody would throw a rock at me or something, because that's the kind of person I'd end up appearing to, is somebody horrible that would just like throw a rock at me or whatever but I don't know swans are pretty fierce so if I was a swan I could probably hold my own that's fine okay so good old Percha Frau Percha as you can tell Frau she's um, from uh, Germanic cultures um, and that kind of leads into the Wild Hunt, which seems to be like a sort of a, a mythological event that Frau Percha seems to be like the leader of. And it's like this wild hunt across the sky where Frau Percha and a bunch of her uh, ghostly, ghouly uh, spiritual entities can be seen like... Um, racing across the sky um it, it i couldn't find anything about what they were hunting um i'm sure it kind of changes depending on who's telling the story but you know that sounds pretty awesome and i'm terrifying i mean if you're like you know you have to see actual like a ghost hunt going across the sky that would probably scare the crap out of a bunch of people. I don't blame them. Alright, there we go. So, when I finish this, I figured out what I need to do is lay something dark down to put the picture on top of so that the camera can pick it up better so that you can see the, like, the finished product. I might even go back and get a black poster board to tape down over this so that my white paper shows up better. The idea for the white was to have color tester, but I can do that on literally anything else. Anyway, back to it. So the next is the, oh man, again, my pronunciation, I am so, so sorry. Um, Barbagazi, 
which comes from French Swiss, Swiss mythology and translates to frozen beard. And um, a, these guys are like, I guess, little gnomes, little cute little fellas that have like long beards and really big feet. And so they can ski around on these feet. And they're supposed to be, like, super helpful. Like, they like helping humans, and they like helping animals, and, and things like that. And if you're in an avalanche, they'll dig you out of the snow, and they'll whistle to try to warn you about it. And just generally helpful little guys. So, um, thank you, Babagazi. Barbagazi, excuse me. But one question, and we'll maybe talk about this later... But where were you for the Dyatlov Pass incident? Which, if you're asking, yes, I have written the script for it, and I will be covering that case in coming weeks. So, okay, here's another one. Um, the Ejirak. Um, and these are, like, shape-shifting shadow people. You can only see them out of your peripheral vision. Um, they're, like, humanoid-shaped. Uh, but their mouths and their eyes are on their face sideways, which sounds horrifying. And what they do is they kidnap children, they lead people astray, um, they kind of get you lost in everything, and they're believed to be people, humans, that are trapped between life and death. Which I'm like, what'd you do to become one of those? Like, what were you doing? Were you... Acting a fool in the woods, and the woods just was like, oh, oh, hell no. And took care of it, or, or what? I forgot his little nose, everybody. Oh, I guess I can do this on camera. I'm so sorry. I tried to move my angle, and I'm not used to coloring this high up. I need to remember what I'm doing now. There we go. So... If you do survive the Ejirak, um, people have no memory of their encounter. Which I'm like, well, if you don't remember it, how do you know what happened? But I think that's just, you know, dudes on the internet speculating. Which, I mean, right here I am, a chick on the internet speculating about dudes speculating, so no shade. I'm trying to make this look like snow a little bit. It's sort of coming together. I don't know how well you can see it on camera, though. All right. The next one is... It's Scottish, and it is not going to be easy for me to pronounce. The Nucula V. N-U-C-K-E-L-A-V-E-E. -E -E. Nucula V, I'm assuming. I'm hoping. If you're Scottish and you know what it is, correct me. I would love that. Okay, so in um, this creature, wow. In Scotland's most northern isles, it's a skinless centaur with two heads. And it says in the research, I kept seeing one giant red eye. And I'm like, is that on each head? Or is that, like, do they share an eyeball and their heads are, like, melded together? I, I don't know. Anyway, I saw a few different artist renditions. Um, I mean, you can Google it and, and see for yourselves. I'm not going to show um, the renditions. I'll be truthful with you. Sometimes I don't show things simply because I'm still learning a lot about editing. And I don't know how to do that yet. And also, um, sometimes I'll look for the artist. And no matter where I look, I can't find them credited and I don't like to post something where I can't credit the artist. I would rather not post it at all. Um, 
I don't know if that's better or worse, but I don't want artists to think I'm trying to steal their artwork. Anyway, so the the Nukali, uh, nu Nukalevi, wow, wow, um, is confined during the summer months, but is, I guess, out able to act a fool and run amok in the winter. And um, it has, like, ice breath that's like also toxic and one faint breath of it will kill a human which is like wow okay um it's blamed for famine and drought which if it's a winter situation like why is it blamed for drought i don't know i mean yes you can have droughts in winter but mm. anyway and speaking his name can bring his wrath. And maybe the only reason he hasn't shown up to unalive me yet is because I'm mispronouncing his name. So maybe that's my defense for saying it horribly wrong. The next we have the Mahaha, which is of Inuit origins. And um, this creature sounds scary as hell. It's, like, extremely, extremely strong. And it's it's very muscular, but it supposedly has, like, unimaginable strength. So, I'm like, what does that mean, you know? And, um, it's got, like, very tight skin where its bones kind of protrude out of its skin. Which sounds horrifying as well. It's got... Oh god, this part's the worst. It's got fingers like knives. And it tickles you. But while it's tickling you, it's shredding you. And so it's like horribly painful. But this thing is tickling you and laughing with a horribly creepy smile while it does it. So that's what you're looking at while you're being shredded to pieces. I mean, honestly, I'd rather be just regular old shanked. And um, it's got large sullen eyes and like stringy hair hanging in its face. It sounds very grudgy or whatever. Ugh. And it leaves its victims, like, just mutilated and shredded and gross and mangled and maimed. But the victim always has, like, a horrifying, like, freakish smile uh, frozen onto their face. So, that sounds adorable, doesn't it? Okay, my next horrible mispronunciation. Um, this is Greek. And let me tell you, when I say I don't know any Greek, like, I speak absolutely none. So, I always wanted to learn it. Um, I, I don't, I won't say that I speak Latin. I'll just say that I have, um, studied some of it, so I have a basic understanding of it and everything, but I'm by no means fluent. But Greek, I have never had a chance to really delve into its uh rules for grammar and um things like that so i don't know but anyway i'm gonna give it my best shot uh Kilikon sario is a gnome-like creature and they live in the center of earth and they spend almost the whole year trying to saw down the tree of life which is you know the um basis for everything living but uh, 12 days during the winter solstice, they get to come up to the surface of the earth and just wreak havoc on um, humans and our world. So they're, they're really um, mischievous and everything, but they're also supposedly very, very stupid. And they can't even count past three. And they get easily distracted. So what people will do is put colanders out on their front step and the 
Sarios, <laughs> sorry, um, they do get distracted by these colanders and they spend all night trying to count the holes in the colander. Um, and they can't do it because they're too dumb. And so then the sun starts coming up and they're forced back uh, down below ground. And by then the tree of life is healed and they're super like pissed about it. And so they start immediately trying to cut it down again and they'll spend the next, you know, nearly a year trying to cut the tree down again. But they won't ever quite get it. But I, I don't know, like if they do one of these days, it means the end of our world as we know it. So, that's an interesting legend. I thought that was a fun one. Because, you know, their whole, like, objective is to um, unalive all humans. That's what they want to do. Alright, is that scary enough? And so, that concludes my winter lore. That's pretty much all I got right now, guys. I'm sorry. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me get my background here. Um, I, like I said, I'll do a part two probably next winter, and I'll do spring lore next, and then we'll have summer lore, fall lore, yada yada. Alright, let's get this under here, and this is how my little fella turned out. Let me zoom out a little bit, and that's how they turned out. Thanks for tuning in, I hope you guys enjoyed this, um... Leave me a comment, um, correct some of my pronunciation, you can um, give me a like if you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more, I've got more cases coming out, I've written a bunch of scripts so I am ready to go, and um, I appreciate you joining me today, and I hope everyone has a good one, and I'll see you next time, bye!